Hello, this is Lisa Shaw of Sew Bubbles, and today I will be teaching how to embroider scripty text around a neckline. This latest trend probably started out as a hand stitching project, but can easily be done using BX fonts in Embrilliance Essentials. This presentation will go backwards, but that is because I find if you can walk through what will happen at the machine first, the software part will fall into place. Plus, once you get home and watch this and do this on your software and create your designs, you may want a refresher so the machine porcelain will be up first at the beginning of this presentation. Although we will be creating circular text, you can tell from this photo that not all round necklines are perfect circles. Your printed templates will help you decide how the lettering should be arranged and adjusted to create the look that you want. For larger projects, such as embroidering around this entire neckline, it will be easier to work on three or even four design layouts together to, that will create this entire project instead of trying to work on it all at once. In addition to proper stabilizer used for the shirt itself, I find that a ruler, temporary marking pen, hoop grid, sticky stabilizer, and a printed template are vital to successful embroidery of this project. An actual size printed template prevents surprises when the embroidery is complete. Use a bit of double stick tape to hold the trimmed template in place while you double check position and placement. Transfer the markings from the template to the garment using the temporary marker of choice. Trust the template. If it looked good on the garment, the markings ensure the embroidery will stitch where you saw it based upon the template. Use the grid to mark your hoop stabilizer. The marks on the hoop may not be the actual center, so be sure to use your grid. My garment has poly mesh fused to where the embroidery is going to be. You can never check too many times. Placing the printed template under the hooped stabilizer ensures that all things are going to line up where they need to be as you're placing the garment onto the sticky stabilizer. You need to match the crosshairs on the fabric with the crosshairs on the stabilizer. A straight pin through both centers gives you an anchor point to maneuver with. The poly mesh helps you to refrain from stretching the fabric into place. Load the embroidery design to the machine and carefully attach the hoop. Use the hand wheel to drop the needle into the fabric. It should be in the exact center of the marked crosshair. Use the onboard adjustments to move the design until the needle lands at the center of the crosshair. The first color that stitches is the basting box. This secures the garment to the stabilizer so your embroidery stitches exactly where you want it to. Water-soluble stabilizer will help with trimming of jumps if your machine doesn't do so, and it, as well as it will allow the stitches to relax after the garment is washed. And now we are done with our project, so let's head on into the software and see how this is all set up. The style of font used in this project is often referred to as a floss font, vintage style, handwriting, or bean stitch script fonts. Two that I used were from Creative Appliques and Linny Penny Embroidery Designs, and they're shown here, both available as BX installation files. We are going to use curved text, and based on the item's neckline that we are going to be working on, it may not be uniform, so we may have to do some adjustments. On a simple t-shirt, you can find a starting point to work with the curve by measuring from the center of the neckline circle to the edge where you want the top of the letters to go, and this will be your starting point. The white shirt I was going to embroider on started with a radius of 4 inches. So to create this text, I first chose the circular text option after choosing the lettering tool. Let's take a step back start with a brand new design page and go right from the beginning on how I created this layout. So here I have my original open design page, nothing's in it, and I am going to select the lettering tool. That puts the ABC in the center of my page and right here at the top I am going to choose circular text. 
So we have multi-line, single line, and circular. So I'm going to change it to that, and nothing changes on the screen yet. I need to type in the text that I, I want to uh, choose. Now I'm going to type in live, love, laugh, and hit the enter key, and you'll see that it arches, but it is in block font. So from the pull down menu here, I'm going to scroll down to the Linny Pinny font, which is the Arial hand font as it, at three quarters of an inch size, and that places it um, in the radius where the text is going above the curve. Couple things to note first. In her sample, she has little hearts that are available to be put, placed in the place in the centers here. To do access those in her key, she has said that those have been mapped to the plus sign. So if I add a plus space in between live, love, and laugh, and then hit the enter key, those little hearts pop in. So make sure you pay attention to any extra characters that the digitizer has provided and what they're mapped to. Now, I this is arching on with where the bottom, that is the radius that is set here, for that where the text is on the bottom of the radius here. So basically from the bottom center here, from this point up to here, which would be our radius if this was the center of our circle, it says that uh, we have our radius set here, but we have our text going on top. So we need to choose place on bottom and that inverts. So it places all the text. So this is the center or this is the top of where our text is going to go around our um, uh, neckline. Now the spacing of our letters to use these slide to make adjustments you can use the slider bars so i'm going to adjust the spacing in between our letters using the slider bars this way that will adjust the characters which is fine but i also want to close up or uh, squish up the space between the hearts so that would be my word spacing so i can make them a little bit closer together I want to do adjustments with my spacing sliders first because once I do that or once I will want to make other adjustments using the center selectors and you can't do that after, after and then go back here and make these adjustments. For example, if I go and I move this heart up here, say I want it to be there and I'm like, oh, I wish I had made my spacing different here. If I click on this and I move my spacing slider, do you see where that heart went? Down to the bottom. So adjust your spacing sliders first, then adjust your um, individual adjustments. That's just a, a tip here. Now, I know that I want this live to be starting at the center of the shirt or towards the center of the shirt and to curve up along the shoulder. So to get an idea of what it's going to look like, I'm going to rotate the entire section around the circle. To do that, I selected the letter L by grabbing on the center's dot selector. I put my mouse cursor on top of the lower triangle, and that not only moves that one letter, but all the letters around it. Of course, I can't see the rest of the letters because they're no longer in my hoop. So while this is still selected, I'm going to click off of it so that I don't just have the L selected. I want the entire lettering tool selected or lettering object selected. And then I hit the center button to center the entire thing in the hoop. Before I go any further with my adjustments, I look at my radius. And if you remember, I said that radius was set to about four inches. So I need to scooch this down till this says about four inches so that when I make these adjustments and print my template, I can see if I need to make any further adjustments because nets are movable. Uh, everything's going to be different. So based upon the template, this is giving me a starting point. So now I'm looking at my letters and it is a script font. And I do want some of these letters to attach each other. So for example, let's look at the word love. See how the O is almost attached to the V? Let's go and zoom in on this so we can actually see it a little closer. I want that O and that V to touch each other. So I'm going to click my center, a selector of the V, grab the lower triangle, and it moves the V 
and the E and the heart and the laugh all together, all at once around that circle. And I can grab the same thing and do that with the E so that it's moving all the letters together. If we zoom out, I wanted to show you up close because that's how you'll want to do it. But look, I'll look at this one here. I have the I and there's the V. If I grab that lower triangle, the V, this is what was happening. It is moving that letter, but all the other letters along with it so that you can make your adjustments nice and close and things as how they need to be. So the last one, I, I those look actually pretty darn good at the moment. So I'm gonna go up here and I need to zoom in a little closer because I wanna see what I'm working on. And I have the A and the U. And if I wanna scoot those over, yes. And then I'm going to go and grab the G and scoot him over. And I'm looking, this is a little tight in here for me. So I may want to make a little bit of adjustment, moving that A up a little bit, moving that U up manually. I am manually moving each letter. I'm not moving them all together anymore because I want to customize this because this curve is not perfect. And you can, depending on the font you choose, you may need to do things such as moving individual letters up and down and you can even do things such as rotating individual letters so if you thought this h was rotating uh, too much to look properly or not enough or you wanted to adjust it you can use the little rotation on the selected letter to get the look that you're exactly looking for so that it's perfect um, for your application just remember to zoom back out. A shortcut key is hitting the A key on your keyboard that will zoom out to all stitches so that you get a good idea of what the finished product is going to look like. You're not so close and looking at it. Let me go and know that I'm, I, uh, based upon things that I've, I've worked on, I think I'm going to have to hoop this little cattywampus. So I'm going to try and keep it as centered as possible. So I'm going to move that L. I'm just looking at how it's it's curving because this is how my template's going to print. And as soon as I have it adjusted, I will hit the center button because that's how the template will print in my center. When I go to print my template, click on my little printer button here. It brings it up and you can see that it's going to print the picture and it's going to print the crosshair so that I can use this as my printed template to see if it matches what is going to happen at the embroidery machine. I almost forgot. The next thing before I save it to go to my embroidery machine is that I need to add my basting box. So under the utility menu, I need to choose Baste Design. And that puts in my basting box that's going to make sure that my, nothing shifts at the embroidery machine. Remember that if you need, if this is a little tight for you and you don't want to have, because you need to stitch this, and you want to make sure that those little running stitches are not stitched on top of the basting box, while your basting box is selected, hold down the shift key on your keyboard, grab a corner and just make it a little bit larger. That resizes the box from center out and it will give you a little bit of breathing room in between each sides so that you don't need to worry about um, having the stitches overlap and fighting with it because we are working with a vintage hand stitch style font. Now, we didn't need the basting box to print the template because when I trim, I was trimming off most of this, but when I am getting ready to go to the embroidery machine, I need to go to file, put my USB stick into my machine and choose save stitch file as to write the embroidery file to the USB drive, eject it and head on over to the embroidery machine, which were the instructions at the beginning of this video. I hope that you enjoyed watching this how-to project video showing an easy way to create and stitch curved script lettering around a neckline. Please visit the Embrilliance YouTube channel for more videos on various specific topics in each of our programs.